special shout out to our sponsors of Rush Reels Live, Car Lumber in Albany, Oregon, the Alzheimer's Association, and Mugs Coffee in Lebanon, Oregon. For more information about Par Lumber in Albany, Oregon, and their building supplies, call 541-926-1525. And for more information on the Alzheimer's Association and how to give, you can go to ALZ.org or check out the link to the walk into Alzheimer's in the comments. Thank you, Jim Coleman. And Muggs Coffee House in Lebanon, Oregon. For amazing coffee, go to MuggsLebanon.com. Ta-da! Welcome to Rust Reels Live, everybody. I am so excited. It is Thursday afternoon, 4 p.m. on the Pacific Coast here, and I am coming to you from Salem, Oregon, and so excited for today. Wherever you are, I am so blessed that you're here, and I am telling you, you're going to be super blessed by our panel today. And if you have not already, share this show out now and let people know amazing people talking networking today. So. Tag all your friends, share it with people, let people know we're going to be talking about how to build your network today and some really amazing people that have done that. So super excited about that. And I just wanted to thank you again for being here. You know, on Rust Reels Live, we're here every Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time for your viewing and listening pleasure. And uh, we just have so much fun. This is a topic-driven, panel-driven show. So what do I mean by that? Well, this is what I mean. We have a great panel every week and an amazing topic, and we just go at it and talk about things that will add value to your life and things that have added values to our lives. I learn every week on this show, and so it is an amazing, amazing uh, platform, and I appreciate it. So, well, thank you for being here today. Uh, I want to let you know that, again, we appreciate so much people that subscribe on YouTube and why? Well, I'll tell you why, because you get all the past content as well as notices to upcoming content. If you just go to rustreels.live, that's all you got to do. Rustreels.live. It will take you directly to my YouTube page. In fact, you can open up a separate tab. Do that now. If you have not subscribed, subscribe today because I'm telling you great, amazing content. They make me look good. I have such great people on this show. So I am so thankful and blessed. God has given me amazing friends that are willing to come on and spend their time with me. And so I just want to thank you for being here, spending your time with us as well. Also, as I said before, please share this out. Tag your friends, share it with your friends, and let them know Rust Reels Live is on an amazing, amazing group today. And I am just so thankful for that. So I want to get things moving along here, but I want to tell you two other things. Number one, behind me, if you have not got your copy of Befuddled, Live the Life You Choose, love to have you get a copy of that. Uh, that is just my way of helping to encourage and inspire you in written form. It is an easy read book, but with great, great uh, inspiring information for you. A little bit more about my life and things that have been going on over the years. So I would love for you to get that. Also, I have been blessed to be part of a project uh, called Rattle the Wake. And uh, Rattle the Wake is just released uh, recently on Amazon. And it's I am a co author. I have an, a 10 amazing other authors with their. We each wrote a chapter. Amazing people. And it, talking about the moment in life that they were rattled awake, that they were really that aha moment and how it impacted their lives in an amazing way. So, I go over my cancer battle over the last year a little bit and really my rattle the wake moment during that. So if you get a copy of that on Amazon, that would be awesome. That was an international bestseller overnight as well as number one in this category on Amazon when it first came out. So that has been a blessing, such a blessing. So wanted to remind you about that. And one more thing that I did not mention, and that is I love to connect. And if I haven't mentioned that, hey, I love to connect. And we're going to talk about networking tonight. And I just want you to know that all you got to do is go to rushhedge.com to connect with me. All of my information's on there. If you need help marketing uh, or live streaming or anything, you can go there and I'd be happy to chat with you. You can schedule time directly on my calendar. Zoom with me. We can talk about things. No cost for that, by the way. No cost to be my friend. And so I would love to be your friend. So please go there to rushhedge.com and click on that today. Plus, you get a free download how to uh, successfully transform your business in three 
simple steps, all about connection and community building. I'll probably pull a little of that out tonight as we talk because this is really wraps around our subject tonight. So, okay, I think that is definitely it. And you know what? I am going to talk with first our guest who is just an amazing individual. He is a master connector. He is just a guy you need to know. And if you, you're you probably already connected to him, but if not, here he comes, Mr. Steve Spiro. Woo. What's going on, Ross? Good to see you. Good to see hey, you, Steve. as always. So good to see you, too. You are, you are a blessing. You are an awesome friend. I appreciate you. And, uh, you know, I have... I don't get to watch your show as much as I like because you know, you. you know how life gets, but I intentionally get there occasionally because such a great, great show, the master connector show and all that you do, but I don't want to give everything away. Tell everybody who is Steve and what are you up to? Absolutely. Well, I appreciate it. It's an honor to be on here with you, sir. And uh, yeah, we keep you in prayer. I know you're, uh, you're, you're overcoming for sure. Um, but yes, yeah, Steve Spiro, the master connector coming at you live and direct. I got to say that uh, it's a signature of mine. But um, yeah, I was an introvert, shy, big, picked on, bully, learning, disabled, dyslexic. I wound up going into advertising marketing, went to high school and college for that. Got out, couldn't get a job, started a company. Uh, also, a martial arts background, a couple of black belts, had a karate studio. But, um, you know, was successful in the advertising industry, but wound up uh, meeting a mentor, eventually took me on his wing and eventually um, challenged me. He said, you need to meet three strangers every day. And I did that and uh, started doing that. It stretched me big time. When you're from New York, if you talk to strangers, you're going to get shot or kidnapped. But he did it. Uh, eventually became a, you know, the, the, you grew a massive network. Uh, today I do consulting. I, I um, also, um, as you said, I have a show on Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern. Master Connector show. I just wrote a book uh, and I do, I do speaking. I'm an inspirational speaker and my hands in several other things, just a few things to keep me productive. So, uh, it, <laughs> keep it, you out of trouble, fun. right? Say again, keep you out of trouble, right? Keeps me out of trouble for sure. Was it, uh, <laughs> uh, idle hands are of the devil or something like that. Right. Yeah. I tell you, well, you are definitely not idle. That is for sure. And speaking of not being idle, a man who is all over the place, a man who is one of the best connectors on LinkedIn I have found, Mr. David Alto, my good friend. Hello, David. Well, hello. Yeah, I, I did. I was on a live at 530 this morning, Pacific time. So you're my second live. Of course, the best live. Today. There you go. And, well, um, before I do look forward to reading this this weekend. So awesome. Um, yeah, thank you for that, Russ. So, well, thank you for getting a copy of that I appreciate you. And, uh, you know, David, I, I keep thinking back to, and I love these moments. You were so kind, so thoughtful. You reached out to me when you came through town, we had coffee. Uh, we got a time to see each other face to face and what an amazing man you are and a good friend. And so tell everybody a little bit more about David Alto and what are you up to? Yeah. First of all, yes, you need to, if you can go and meet, try to meet some of your connections on LinkedIn. You, you just need to, you know, you know, you're yeah. going to be somewhere. You start looking up some people. Hey, you know, maybe you only got a couple minutes. That's okay. Maybe you're in an airport. They can meet you that whatever, but you need to. Uh, yeah. Yes. So uh, in a nutshell, I help job seekers. Uh, it could be with career advice, could be with interview prep, needing that resume, needing that LinkedIn profile that actually gets recruiters to contact them. And I've recently started doing outplacement services. I uh, have a client that's going to be laying off 100 people every month from October until April. They're doing it slowly, wow. but I'll be helping them with the, So that's a, that's going to keep me extremely, uh, extremely busy. I love LinkedIn. Boy, I tell you what. Um most people on LinkedIn are consuming, uh, and and uh, hey, I see uh, Kenny's uh, Kenny's watching us from uh, uh, YouTube. There, hello, Kenny. Uh, you know, on LinkedIn, most people consume LinkedIn. Meaning, you know, on Instagram, on Facebook, people are posting all the time. On LinkedIn, if you show up and post tips and advice, you can wake up one day with uh, one hundred eighteen thousand followers. I still don't know how that happened, uh, but it just did. <laughs> So it, it did definitely. And you know what I have found, I'm going to give away a little secret and we could talk more about these tips and tricks, but here's my first tip. My David Alto 
tip and trick to connecting with people. When you have good friends like David who are highly connected, go into their feed and look at the people they're connected with, the people that you want to be connected with. Send them a message, a connection request. And I always tell people, this is honest from the bottom of my heart, by the way. I tell them, I see you're connected to David. You know, any any friend of David's is a friend of mine because that is so true. And I said, I'd love to connect. And boom, almost all of them connect to me. And almost all of them tell me how great David is. I love that guy, they tell me. So yeah, speaking of loving people and people that have been around for a while, the person with probably the almost the best name in this group, and that would be Mr. <laughs> Russ Johns in the house. Hey, Russ. What's happening, everyone? <laughs> well, we're here waiting for you because now we got double Russ power going on. Yeah, and it's this stereo. is really Russ Reels. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, it's uh, great to be here, Russ, and as always, uh, I, I enjoy hanging out with you. And I'm kind of envious uh, of uh, David being able to cruise by and catch up with you in, in person. I was there earlier in the year and unavailable. You know, we missed each other, but uh, I'll keep going. I'll keep trying again and uh, we'll catch up eventually in person. So, yeah, you know, that was it. that was so close. I was within uh, 45 minutes of being able to meet up with Russ but his schedule was slightly off. Mine was slightly off from our, from each other. And so we just didn't quite do it, but Oh man, I was so bummed. You were so close. And, <laughs> and so that's kind of how I'm feeling. I told you guys, I get, I get the pleasure and blessing with, because of some people that have helped and blessed me, I get to go back to the Tim Stone showing up perspectives on cancer conferences next Friday, um, a week from tomorrow. And so there's going to be people like Tim Stone. I've never been in the same room with, and what a blessing that's going to be, but also sharing that perspective on cancer in our lives and how it's touched us. It'll be really meaningful to me. And um, when I told my beautiful wife and my daughter that I wanted to go back, they're like, you definitely got to do that. And it's going to be a blessing. So yes, David, your trip, uh, your tri uh, tip and trick about meeting up with people in person, very, very important. And the person I get to meet up with in person more often than the rest of y'all, but not enough is my good friend and co-host who I see online every week, Mr. D. Scott Smith. Hey, Scott. <laughs> you know, it's funny because we are just like 10 minutes apart, but uh, life and stuff anyway. But yeah. Well, we do, we do get together every fun now to and be then. Here. And, yes. Well, and people, if you watch closely on the Experience Live with Russ and Scott, you'll see new pictures occasionally when Scott and I are mm -hmm. actually together. And last time he came and visited me in my backyard uh, when yep. I was recovering and brought me comic books and just <laughs> blessed me. So that was so awesome. So and I figure when you're when you're recovering from surgery, what's the best thing, right? I mean, you got to have a Marvel and DC comic books because oh yeah, you bet. that's a, you a bet. healing right there, right? <laughs> that did it. That did it for me. Well, Scott, listen, most everybody knows you, but for those that don't, give everybody a little insight. Who is Scott and what are you all about? Yeah, so fortunate to live with my beautiful wife in Independence, Oregon, and we're right across the river from Salem. So we're about an hour from Portland here in Western Oregon, and it's, um, it's a, a little destination town, if you will. We're right on the river. It's uh, founded in 1845. I walked downstairs to the coffee shop, the bakery, candy store, uh, walked to the post office, walked to the cinema. It's like an ideal life. Uh, but I did write a book. Oh, no, that's not my book. But <laughs> you should get a copy of this one. Make well, you sure. should buy that book. You get, a, get a copy of this one. Um, so here's uh, Business Networking, a Scientific Method. And networking... Uh, you don't have to be an extrovert and it is not limited by being an introvert. There you go. Well, that is so true. And that is a good way to start off this discussion because it's interesting, Scott, you know, my profession before um, I was sales and marketing manager for a large corporation and uh, had a whole sales team that went out there and I learned in hiring them, some of the best salespeople were not extroverts, they were just good connectors. They were authentic connectors. And it made such a big difference because it's really not, 
the quantity you do, but the quality you do. I just happen like to do, I like to do a high quality quantity and a high quality all at the same time. But I'm trying to be like David. One day I'll, I'll get there and I'll be able to do that. But so David, let's start off with you and give everybody a little insight on when you started uh, in your connection and networking uh, journey, man, it's turned into an amazing group and community you have, especially on LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, what, so what did I start off doing? Well, I took some tips and advice in 2019 for some amazing people here on LinkedIn. And I really didn't worry about my content. Um, I really just engaged with other people that uh, thought leaders, just anybody that I that resonated with me, uh, regardless of the industry. And, you know, I connected away. You know, I tried to get on four or five Zoom calls a week uh, with some of these people. And uh, we weren't burnt, burnt out on Zoom calls just yet. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> and, and why not? Now, maybe we never did that again, but that's okay. You know, and maybe we didn't get in person like, you know, Russ and I did. But again, um, did that initially. And then I just, again, I consumed a LinkedIn. And anytime I learned something new on LinkedIn, I shared it as a tip. Now, it could be something regarding LinkedIn. It could have been something thought leadership. Uh, I was still in my day job at the time, but um, I was still providing resume advice because I've been writing resumes and helping people, uh, job seekers for a long time, just on the side, not getting paid for it. Uh, but anytime I learned anything new, I shared it on LinkedIn and people, people want to learn on LinkedIn. That's why they're here. Most people consume LinkedIn. It's not like Facebook and, you know, uh, Instagram where people post all the time. Um, people consume it. So they want people, they want subject matter experts. And even if you're not an expert um, or you're at a different level of expertise, um, if you provide value, then you can consider yourself somewhat an expert. And again, um, you, so many, some of my clients will say, well, Dave, if they're not in my industry or don't work for the company, why would I want to connect with them on LinkedIn? And I would say, well, you don't go to an in-person networking event and only connect with people or chat with people, you know, that are in your industry. The answer is no. So you should do the same thing on LinkedIn. Now, if they live in a third world country and you don't want to, you know, chat with them, I get it. Maybe they try to sell you something. I get it. Uh, but you have to open yourself up to having conversations with a little bit of everybody. And maybe that's not, again, a Zoom call. Maybe it's just messaging back and forth in the comments. Um, and it is a little bit of work, uh, but it's very rewarding work. And you get to meet uh, amazing people uh, here on LinkedIn. Well, I couldn't agree with that more. Uh, I have met all of you amazing people except for... D. Scott Smith, because uh, he and I actually graduated Oregon State together and are both Oregonians, knew each other before. But it was through networking because we didn't know each other in college. We met years later through business, through a networking event and uh, through a chamber, local chamber. And, hmm. you know, I think what David said is true. And then, Steve, I'm going to kick it to you because you are the master connector. But I found that if you put some work in, I have made a goal every day to reach out to a certain number of people and connect with them. Um, my goal each year, the last two years has been to con truly connect with over a thousand new people each year. And people say, well, that's impossible. No, I mean, last year I just knocked that out of the park. That's only just over three people a day. You can, you can authentically connect with three people a day. You can, you just takes a little bit of work. And so you've got to put that little bit of work in, but what a blessing it is. And I have found making it simple. You guys know that I use my connection link. I make it super simple. I kick it out to people. I would say 90% of the people I kick it out to connect with me and we zoom and we talk and I have made amazing friendships that way or pursuing them on their shows. Like I did to both Russ and Steve. So Steve, take it away. Oh, and you're you're muted though. Rookie That's mistake. You're... There it goes. <laughs> got to have it happen one one time. Man. You know, got to get that T-shirt from 2020. You're on mute. But uh, David, great, great, great stuff there. And uh, man, I'm I'm aspiring to be at your level, man. You're in the 120,000 plus followers. That's incredible. Great job with that. 
Yeah, I mean, so LinkedIn, I started my journey in two, 2008 with LinkedIn and, and um, you know, kind of baby steps, but then eventually started to, you know, mass, you know, send out mass emails until they started putting you in jail for it, you know, LinkedIn jail. But I, I tell you one thing that, that has helped me because there is a limit to the amount of connect requests you can do. And I'm, I'm growing my LinkedIn connection still. Um, so one thing is, because I think they, they limit you to roughly about 120 a week, I want to say connect requests, something like that. It's, it's, it, there's a certain limit to it. But one thing I find is really good to, as a technique to, to reach out to people is you go into the who you may know section, right? And then it, it kind of breaks it up into categories. So right now I'm looking to connect with people more in the, in the New York area, New York metro area, and it's broken out in a category. And now I could kind of scroll through that and just systematically hit a connect button. I don't do the special message. And a, a large majority of people connect back with me. Uh, they accept my connect request. I also like scrolling through the feed, the news feed, and seeing who stands out to me because I get obviously people on the feed that does that I'm not connected with, but I find it to be interesting. But to to David's point, it's been an incredible blessing throughout COVID when we were locked down. I felt more connected than ever before because I was growing my community on LinkedIn. My policy is if we connect on LinkedIn, you're going to get a message, and I'm going to suggest we get on a Zoom call. Not not everyone's going to take me up on it. In a way, thank you, thank God they don't, because I don't. I probably wouldn't get anything done, um, because I'm I'm connecting with a good amount of people every week, and but I'm averaging probably 20, 25 Zoom calls a week, uh, something like that, of people that I've connected recently with LinkedIn or reconnects with people I you know I spoke to two, three, four, five years ago and want to reconnect and catch up. So I also like doing the you know, congrats on your anniversary, connect, you know, congrats on your job change. And I'll send the message. And if they respond, I'll suggest we get on a call to catch up or if we haven't connected before. So those are some things that I do because I feel like if you're on LinkedIn and you're connected, you're not really connected unless you actually have a conversation. You need to right. build a relationship. And it's yeah. funny when you t I talk to some people, especially the younger generation, they're like kind of weirded out some of them, right? Like, I don't know you. Why would I talk with you? I'm like, okay. Um, aren't you on a social media, social networking platform to connect with new people? I mean, I don't get that, but yeah, it's uh, it's interesting out there. But <laughs> but the majority of people are very open minded to connecting, and I think it's great. Yeah, well, I think what you just said, you know, it, it's a it's a particular mindset. Then there are people that are not of that mindset, but you know, it definitely reaching out to people. There's many ways, and you and I have and and David have talked about a few of them already. Um, but, you know, you got to take that time to really get to know people. This is why I consider all of you amazing friends, um, even though I still got to get in the same room with you, Steve and Russ. But you know what? You can, as my friend D. Scott Smith, uh, he scientifically proved you can create amazing connections and friendships, even through video. And he gave a talk on that a few years ago in Dublin, Ireland. And Scott, I'm going to jump to you real quick and give everybody just a little insight on that. And I am not muted. No. <laughs> <laughs> Starting off right. So yeah, I gave a talk and it was called the uh, psychology and physiology of relationships. And what we did is looked at, at uh, the brain science around how we connect and basically looked at that academic research and proved that the relationships that we create digitally can be just as strong as those that we create face to face. Now, this was back in 2016. So 2020 comes along and we have a three year global laboratory that proved that to be true. That's right. Exactly. Well, and that was a very short description of that, but I think what is important about all that? You caught me off guard. You ended we only, so soon. We only have a we only have a, a limited amount of time. You're so good at that. You are so good up, at that. Pack it in there, right? But you know the the um, when I'm I am uh, multitasking here as we're talking. Um, what I love about that is not only did you create uh, scientific proof around that, but you also made amazing friends in Ireland, which propelled you to start yeah. the global tea break with Alan Hennessy, which propelled you to ask your good friend Russ to join the global tea break, which propelled me 
to a networking journey around the world. It and, did. It did. Yeah. So uh, let me just, uh, I'll, I'll go a little bit more on that. Uh, I'll, I'll tell one of the stories that they did. Okay. Um, so part of the research around this was putting people at the base of a hill and asking them how steep that hill was. And when they were by themselves, invariably, that hill appeared to be steeper than when they had a good friend standing next to them. So if Steve Spiro and I are standing there and they ask me, Scott, how steep is that hill? I will say that it is not as steep as if I was when I was alone. But they continued it on and they said, okay, now just think about a good friend. So I go, okay, Russ Johns is my good friend. And how steep is that hill? Well, it turns out again that he didn't need to physically be there, right? He didn't mm. need to be there in person. I just needed to know that Russ Johns is my friend and the world is less daunting when you have a good network, when you're connected with people. And there's two types of, of support. There's enacted support. And that's the stuff where I go, oh, I'm going to bring comic books to Russ because he needs to, to heal up from surgery. Well, that's enacted support. Uh, but perceived support, and that's just knowing, you know, Russ Hedge knowing that that uh, David and Steve and Russ and Scott are there for him, mm -hmm. even though we don't do anything, just knowing that you have those connections is more important than the enacted support. So perceived support is is critical in our lives and it's a part of our network. Well, and what is so amazing about that, Russ, and I'm going to jump to you next, and that is... Perceived support, I can remember uh, running with and walking with friends when I was young to exercise. So let's just say running. Running is harder. So we're jogging together. We're running together. Well, you know what? It is way easier when you got somebody next to you you're talking with and you feel their support. Um, my son and his beautiful wife were just in New York, and they sent us videos of them running across the Brooklyn Bridge into Manhattan. And I tell you, when you're in a beautiful place like that with the one you love, it is a lot easier to run across the Brooklyn Bridge, I can tell you. So um, those kind of things are so true. Russ, take it from there. Well, I, not only does it give you the perception of being assisted along the way, and I think it really actually encourages you to have a little bit more confidence because you're not alone. You know, there's this feeling when you're isolated that you're alone. And with the technology, the communications and the, the collaboration that we have, like this as an example, is the idea that we have, a, you know, a global connection now, the ability and opportunity to have conversations that we can encourage each other. We have technology that allows this to take place. And what I was thinking of when Scott was explaining that is the idea that um, I have hanging in my, my room here, I have a bicycle that I purchased probably in 1976. It was a, a very high-end bicycle because I rode bicycles. And whenever we would ride together, it was almost like this, uh, this encouragement along the way. And, and so like drafting and when the wind hits you, you, you could take turns in the wind and it was, you could travel for miles that way. And, and that's exactly what we're doing now in a digital format is this idea that we have people that are along the ride, they're part of the community, and they can encourage, and like David said, add value. And, you know, where we can, we can actually meet in person, you know, and, and that's what uh, that's what we're doing here is, is uh, an extension of that. And we don't have to be in the same town, same room, or the same city. However, we have that connection. We have that ability to build confidence in our ability to help and support each other. I think that's so important for us to think about as we move forward in, in life here today. Yeah, no, I agree. And Steve, I want to bounce to you on this, but I give an example of how sometimes it's way better to actually do it virtually because of the ground you can you can actually cover. I was driving from the town of Lebanon, Oregon to Albany, Oregon, only like a 20 minute drive or less. And on the way, I was speaking on the phone to my good friend Usama, who's over in Cyprus in the Middle East. 
I stopped and I had to talk to Alan Hennessy in Dublin, Ireland. I ripped down to Florida to talk to Rods for a little while. Then I had to come over to Denver, down to LA and back to Salem all before 11 a.m. And you know what? You can cover so much ground to fly all those areas and do all that. It would take you a little bit longer than that. So sometimes, Steve, this virtual thing can work out to your advantage, right? Yeah, 100 percent. I, I just want to chime in on on the whole uh, D. Scott Smith's um, theory about the 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 video and, and virtual. You know, one thing that comes to mind, I don't know if you guys do this, but I love binge watching on Netflix. Uh, I'll, I'll admit I, I am. I, I am in recovery on that, uh, you know, on a 12 step program on on that. But, you know, love watching these shows and especially ones that have great character development, because I'm I almost feel like they're now I have a relationship with them. I feel like they're friends of mine and they're on a camera. They're on screen now. And and so I feel like I don't know if it's me or out of the world has just shifted with with that. But I believe that the video connection is 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 kind of a maybe a stepping stone of that a little bit, right? Where you're actually getting to have relationships with people virtually. But I agree with you. I've got an incredible relationship with somebody who I met uh, through LinkedIn. He was going to, you know, he was trying to get on my show. He was, he's a comedian speaker. He, he didn't necessarily, that didn't work out, but we've become one of the closest friends that I've been to. He's in Carol, the Carolinas. So I've been to the Carolinas. He's been to New York and Connecticut now, you know, I mean, we've, we've got this incredible strong relationship, and it's a result of, you know, and by the way, I'm happily married. I don't mean it in that any weird way. But, you know, it's like we we are, you know, it's it's a great bond and connection. And it was done through a virtual relationship. We probably spent a good, I don't know, three, four or five months connecting before we actually got to meet physically. Um, and it's amazing. And, and people like, like you, Russ, I mean, you know, I, I feel like we're close friends. And we've never physically met. Now, shame on you if you come to New York and you haven't asked me to, to connect with me, you know, physically, you know. Uh, and Russ Johns, you, you got to come. We got to figure out how to connect if you're going to be in New York also. I'm a 40-minute drive from New York City uh, or, you know, up this way. Come, I mean, we're out of the water here. So come here, hang out, whatever. So, but anyway, how, it's. How close are you to Newark Airport? Um, Yeah, maybe like a 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, uh, unfortunately I am not driving. I have uh, somebody coming to pick me up, but you're welcome to come to Newark airport. I'll be there and we can take a <laughs> selfie. Um, but, uh, no, I, I agree with you. I mean, you know, and, and back to what David said a little while ago about taking advantage of those. Every time I go somewhere, Steve, I am thinking about, Oh my goodness, who do I need to connect with that lives in that area? I mm -hmm. want to find people that I can actually meet up with and connect with because you don't always get a lot of those opportunities, right? And so it's amazing. And, you know, again, through networking and through connecting. So I'm a huge uh, connection community builder. And just like we're talking about today. And um, my whole thing is really about how it works from one person to the next to the next. When you actually put a little effort in, you can get all the way around the world Dr. Nupi Aurora, who I produce her live stream show, has connected me with people in Portland, Oregon, that are actually 40 minutes from me. And I got connected. She's in England. She's connecting me with people over here. It's amazing, you know, yeah. how things work, right? So anyway, I'm just I'm just so thankful. So, okay, David, back Russ, to you. Can I just can I just say oh, one yeah. thing? Uh, da David Alto is not the or the originator, originator. No disrespect. You're amazing. But um, you might have probably read it from the book Never Eat Alone, because in that book, which is a great networking book, really a good networking book, he recommends when you travel, you go, you, you ask people, hey, would you like to grab coffee or grab a bite? And when I visited this friend in North Carolina, that's exactly what we did. I had, a, I had a little mini networking group of five people that I connected with, including him. Uh, and we had like a little coffee shop and we had a little networking thing. All people I met through LinkedIn. It's pretty cool. So absolutely. I agree wholeheartedly what you're doing though. Just want to throw that in there. Well, David, as I bounce to you here, I was going to say that on that topic, um, one of my favorite things to do in live networking groups is to whittle down from making an impact on everybody in the room to the few you're actually going to connect with outside the room, coffee, lunch, whatever. And uh, you can do that virtually, virtual coffee, virtual lunch. I do that all the time. David, 
how did you get to a hundred and one? I don't even know how many you got a hundred plus thousand connections. Sure. sure. What's your secret? Um, I, there's the <laughs> secret. The secret is no secret. The secret is showing up, providing advice and guidance and, uh, Really, I mean, but I mean, I don't engage, you know, I don't spend hours on my own content engage. You know, I engage with my you know, the people that are commenting, but I spend more time engaging with the content of others. Just like what you uh, said, Russ, you went to my, maybe my profile and started engaging with some of the people that are commenting on mine. And that's a good best practice. I mean, some of the best ways to get noticed is not by posting because let's say you're new to linkedin you have 100 followers well when you post you're probably not gonna it's probably gonna be crickets right not a lot of people engaging uh, but if you spend more time maybe uh engaging with somebody that has a couple hundred thousand followers and and you, what if you're the one of the first people to engage with that post right so and if you follow if you're following them and you rang their bell you'll get a notification when they post almost immediately most of the time when linkedin isn't you know all kind of screwed up once in a while but uh you'll get <laughs> you'll get a notification but if you're one of the first people that post and you and you like share a very thoughtful comment well what if that post gets thousands and thousands of comments what if it gets hundreds of thousands of views millions of views well, then your content's being seen by more people. So um, that's what I did for quite a long time on LinkedIn. Because even I, I still remember having 5,000 followers and connections on LinkedIn and my content still not getting very much love and attention. So I went back to doubling down on spending more time on uh, engaging with the content of others. And then... Um, if you provide tips and advice daily, and you decide to do that more often than daily, a couple times a day. Um, I I saw my views uh, and and follower count and connections uh, double when I doubled down on putting out more content. Right. Well, and I think what's amazing about that, and I look at your con, you're one of the. The, the people in this group right here are some of the small group that I really intentionally go to on a regular basis. And let me tell you that when you get on other people's content where they're having a lot of engagement and you start engaging those people, a lot of David's people that I've connected with recently have really started engaging back with me. I've got zoom meetings with them where we're they're liking my content, showing up on live stream shows doing stuff and it's, it just takes a little bit of effort but you know what by engaging and showing other people you care people mm -hmm. start caring about you right russ people jump in and they say you know what don't care how much people how much russ knows but i know that he cares and i want to help him yeah it's uh, and that's where the theme you know kindness is cool and smiles are free it does it takes no it takes no investment other than your time and, uh, you know, like D. Scott Smith, you know, being an active listener and paying attention, getting engaged in, the, in a community or a conversation like David said, you know, being in the comments, being there and available to offer some valuable information, not just say, hey, great post, thanks. Uh, you know, actually taking the time and, and being thoughtful with your responses and your engagement, it's, it, it's important and people recognize that. And people want to be associated and connect with people that care. And that it's it's a simple equation. It's humanity 101. And I think that's that's really what it's about is you know just showing up, paying attention, and being present. Yeah. I think that well, that's the secret right there. It's being present. And um, you know, I I just said it, but I love that quote by John Maxwell, and I think uh um, it's been said by a few others, but I know John Maxwell is attributed to it. And that is people don't care how much, you know, until they know how much you care, the caring thing, the kindness is cool. Smiles are free showing people you care, showing people you want to spread kindness and just be not one of those creepy people on LinkedIn that sends you a 10 page sales pitch on the first connection request. Okay. Can I just say for anybody who's watching it's creepy. Okay. Don't do that. Don't do that. Cause first of all, 
I just say, thanks for connecting. Have a nice life. And off I go. Never to probably come back to that person again because. I have a franchise. I have a franchise opportunity. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Does anybody read those? I don't read them. I don't read them. That's they're too long. (laughs) No, no. In fact, that's another thing. Okay. So let's talk about that. When you engage with people, short and punchy is good. Right, because people don't have all day to read posts. And when you're doing your daily posts, like David's are like this. My newsletter, by the way, is like this too. Just mm-hmm. FYI, if you're not if you guys are not subscribed to my newsletter, but first copy, gotta subscribe to that. But it's but short and punchy, short and good information. Get it out and let people to be able to consume it quickly, right, Scott? You want to let them consume that content without going having to sit there all day to read it. Yeah, absolutely. And that that's part of the caring, right? We we care about people's time. You want to respect that. And yeah. and if all they all they do is read your stuff, I mean maybe. So here's the deal. Uh on the average Americans consume 5 hours of video every day. Right? Which that's basically insane. says uh on the average Americans have 5 hours of discretionary time every day. They just know they just don't know what to do with it, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, but I want to I want to address uh, David's hundred and seventy some thousand uh, followers there, because uh, what we talk about is there's two different types of networks, right? So, um, David doesn't know one hundred and seventy thousand people. He's connected to one hundred and seventy thousand people, but. Uh, so that's your extended network. And from that, you pull what I call your active network. And in this case, we follow Robin Dunbar's rule, which uh, he's the uh, uh, English uh, sociologist who says we can manage about 150 relationships, plus or minus, right? Mm-hmm. And so what you do is uh, go to your LinkedIn profile, download your contacts. It'll take you about uh, it'll take a few minutes, but it's going to come into a, a spreadsheet. And uh, it's a really cool thing because it's in reverse chronological order. So the most recent person that you connected with is going to be at the top all the way down to the very first person you connected with. And as you scroll through that, you'll go, oh, yeah, that's when I worked at this company. And this is when I was at this conference. And these are these different things, right? You'll see these strata. Uh, and then... Um, in that spreadsheet, not in your LinkedIn profile, but on that spreadsheet, go through and delete the rows of the people that you don't know, right? Delete the rows of the people that you would never do business with, either getting referrals or giving referrals or something, right? And then what's going to happen is every time we've done this, you're going to come down to between 100 and 120 people. That's your active network. Those are the people that you do business with. And there's five distinct roles within that. There's your mentors and advisors. Who is it that you turn to for advice? Your mentees, because everyone should be giving back to the next generation or to someone else that's coming along. And by the way, the teacher learns more than the student anyway, so it's going to be good for you. And then uh, you've got customers. And if you're a student, those are your teachers and your employers, right? But uh, you've got your customers, so that's the the next group. Uh, The largest group of people are what I call um, partners. These are people who solve problems that you don't solve, but allow you to add value into your network, right? They're the, yeah, I don't do web development, but I know a web developer. Oh, you want to start a podcast? Let me connect you up with Russ, right? Uh, you need to get a show produced. Let me connect you up to the other Russ, right? Uh, (laughs) that allows me to add, that's probably 60% of your network is people who solve problems that you don't solve. The final group are your advocates. Those are the people who actually send referrals your way. That may be only six or 10, maybe 12 people if you're lucky out of that 120. So you need to understand that. So when you go to a networking event and they and, and you shake hands with somebody or you walk in, you're traveling like Steve and you have lunch with somebody just to connect with them, um, you're not there just to to sell them something. And they know that because you say, look, I just want to know where you fit. You know, uh, I have a structure. Mm -hmm. I have an extended network from that. I pull into my active network and it's very likely that I just need to know what you do and 
and what problem you solve and who your customer is because I meet people every day. And I got to con- and they have problems. That the world has problems. Those people have problems and they're looking for solutions. I can connect you up. That's that's what I want to do. And so well, um, that's a long-winded answer to something you said you should be short. <laughs> oh, that's all right. I I skipped over you last time anyway, so you deserved a double slot on that one, but you know <laughs> This is one thing that I find too, and uh, you, I believe, have all done this for me, and that is, and I try to do this for you, and that is connecting people together. One thing I love about this show is I'm able to connect people live on the air that don't know each other a lot of times, but I also just send somebody, hey, you know what? Two awesome people that should know each other, Scott and David, whatever, and just let them take it from yep. there because that that mutual connection, Steve, is what gives us that that it's kind of the warm, it's like the warm uh uh call, right? Warm, warm lead, whatever. It's not it's not like completely cold because they say, Oh, well, they know Steve. Well, of yeah. course, it's gotta be a good person, right? What do you think about that? Yeah, 100 percent And and that's partially why I wanted to grow a big network because and there's a big debate about it, you know, hey, quality versus quantity, quantity versus quality. I think you can get quality in the quantity, right? And and so the having a big network has has been great. And I'm I'm aspiring to be uh, like David. Uh, it was be like Mike, be like David, right? Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, you know. It, but the cool thing is it, when I connect with somebody, maybe I want to connect with a high level CEO, and if for some reason I'm connected with sixteen of his peers, he's saying to himself, hmm. 16 of my peers think that he's worthy enough to connect with. I'm going to connect with him and maybe I should actually talk with him. So there's a real value in having, uh, and again, I'm not accepting anyone's connect request. Most, if it's from another country, very rarely, because again, same thing, they're probably pitching you or there's a scam going on. 99, uh, often, I'm not saying all the time. There's people that are legit. I'm not saying anything about people from other countries, but in my experience, it's what it's been seeming like when I when I do at least accept or engage. But um, the bottom line is big network. And then the other thing is, you know, my perspective when I'm ne- out there networking, I'm, I've got this huge value of this resource of, of in my case, you know, 25,000 connections. And I, I could potentially offer some of those to you and make some connections, connect some dots. So there's a real asset that you have in building a big network. And that's and besides the exposure, right, used to be in the advertising industry. And, you know, you, you, you got, you know, the, these, you know, the Super Bowl ads were are still to this day get a, you know, whatever it's a million dollars a minute or some crazy number because of the huge number of eyes that, that, could, that watch the ad. Right. So you want to have exposure to three people or three thousand or thirty thousand, whatever. Right. And so there's a real value to a big network. But I think the biggest one back to your your question, Russ, is when somebody sees a mutual connection or multiple mutual connections, they're like, man, this person, I need to speak to this person. And and there's real value there. And I'll just say, I mean, this is the perfect thing. You've got to make those, make those connections. Right. Right. And this is the beautiful thing about LinkedIn because it's easy for me to go, Oh, Steve, do you know, David? Little right. Connect. So literally right before this uh, show, I was in another networking event. Uh, Anastasia Lipsky runs this, this event. And, uh, it's been a while since I was there. Uh, she talks about how to get on podcasts and uh, to be a good host and to be a good guest. And she had a new person on there, uh, Helen uh, Cernet. Helen's got a podcast where she just reads lists, right? Lists of presidents, lists of vice presidents, lists of, and it's all about putting people to sleep. It's just 15 minutes of a list, right? <laughs> so you put it on and you fall asleep. And I'm like, that's pretty cool. And, um, but she goes, but I'm looking for connections. And I go, look, as a part of the global tea break, uh, Joanne Callahan is over in Ireland. She's a sleep expert. She's got a podcast. She's been on podcasts. So it's easy for me to say, Hey, let's connect on LinkedIn. And then I'll make an introduction to Joanne. Right. Doesn't cost me anything, but a couple of minutes. And yeah, right. the ability to recall, okay, Joanne, Joanne, what's Joanne's last name? Oh, yeah. Right. Boom. Right. Done. 
Well, and you know, Scott, with that too, uh, and we're going to get to our last round here. And David, I'm going to jump to you. But with that, when you have mutual connections and you're coming together as a community and people already have a feel for that community, I figure like David, when I come onto your page, I figure people have a feel for the way you operate. And if they're sticking around and commenting and actively engaging, those are the kind of people I want to engage with, right? That's so I just start thinking, who do I want to engage with? Who? And honestly, I'm the kind of person I don't care where they are in the world. I reach out to people all over the world. During my cancer battle over the last year, I have had a whole just thousands of those people reach back to me and pray for me and call me and do things. It's a, been such a blessing. Also, when you're connected, like Tim Sohn, good example. I'm going to that that showing up perspectives on cancer next week. He connected me with a with a gentleman who has now become my great friend. Who now we're roomies at the conference. He's picking me up from the airport. Then we became friends with this gal from New York who's riding with us to the conference. And so James and Zareda suddenly are great friends of mine. And I've only known them for a short time, but it's because of all the mutual connections, the community that's already banded together that has been an advantage for my network. Right, David? It's coming together with like-minded people. 100%. Uh, I'll, I'll just leave, I'll leave with this. So on LinkedIn, you max out at 30,000 connections. You can't have any more. I have 29,100 and something, 118,000 followers. But the power isn't always who you know, just like what we're, we're all talking about today. Hey, I can introduce you to this, this person. The, the really power on LinkedIn is those second degree connections. And everybody can see how many you have. I have it. I, I checked before the show. I have 4.4 million second degree connections. So one of my when one of my clients asked me, Dave, do you know somebody that works at this company? The answer is probably going to be yes. But what if it's a smaller company? The answer might be no, but I might know somebody that knows somebody. So connecting with people that have a few connections actually helps helps as well, but it helps you help other people. So, and again, so everybody can check out how many, you know, second degree connections you have. You go into the search, you click in there, you click people, you go to connections, you hit second degree. It'll tell you how many you have. Uh, and again, the more connections your connections have, the bigger that gets. So. Yeah. Well, that's it. That's utilizing that to your advantage in a good way. I mean, oh, yes. just because you're using something to your advantage doesn't mean you're being deceitful. You're being smart and thinking, these are the kind of people I want to hang out with. Jim Rohn said, we are the average of the five people closest to us. Well, let's get a nice big five that keeps us expanding, right? And keeps getting better. And so we keep getting better through all that. So David, how do people get in touch with you? Um, I would say uh, probably just LinkedIn. Uh, message me on LinkedIn. I check it. A bot isn't going to, uh, my VA isn't going to check it. It'll be me. Uh, send me a, a connection request. I can accept 800 and some more. And I got to save some for some clients. So, uh, but uh, yeah, message me on LinkedIn, follow me uh, and uh, we'll take it from there. Well, I want to tell you that I am just blessed that I got in on the connection train before you were running out of connections. <laughs> Yeah, and, I, you know, you go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, every month now I do go look and thin out a few, uh, some older ones, not former clients, but just some, because again, you max out why LinkedIn has that. You can have unlimited followers. I got connections that have millions and millions of followers, but for whatever reason, you can only have 30,000 connections. Go yeah. Figure. yeah. I don't know. I have no idea why that is, but use what you can, right? You just get keep getting people that are interested in following. And, um, you know, as I uh, bounce to you, Russ, I was going to say that um, one thing that I have been really blessed with through the process is um, other people that are thoughtfully thinking about what you're like and want to connect you to people. Right. And so as we talked about helping each other out. As you're building that community, as you're posting daily, like David said, as you're being engaging with other people's content, those people are forming an image and a perception of who you are and what you're all about. And I think that as they do that, they think of people they know that they can connect you with. And a lot of those people, I'm telling you, 
if anybody is not connected to Luke in New York, you got to connect with Lucas. He'll connect you with about a thousand just by himself. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, I'm just telling you. Yeah, there you go. That's it. That's Luke. But you know, the thing is with uh, people is they start forming those opinions based on the things you're doing. And Russ, uh, I started watching you from the get go and learning and you've been, I won't even call you a connection. You are just such an amazing friend and the best name ever. <laughs> well, I, I want to amplify this message that David just covered. And the reality is, is we have, you know, the opportunity to do this and make the connections, but it's, it's not only, uh, who you know, but who knows you, right? Because, you know, with D Scott Smith, the first time we met having been online and having that connection and being able to jump on a call, it removed the uncomfortable position of walking into the room and not knowing anyone. So when you do have the opportunity to meet in person, there's no reservations about how, how will I act? What will I do? You know, what are we going to talk about? Because you are, it's almost as if you already know the individual and it's really simple. Like you're saying, Russ, you know, all of a sudden you've met them online, you've had conversations and now you're, you're driving to a conference together. It just, accelerates that connectivity and that conversation and that collaboration element. So it's really important just to, to reach out. And like I said before, you know, put yourself out there, be consistent, create content. You know, that's what the whole news, the, the pirate newsletter is all about is for creators by creators. You know, it's, it's created for that purpose to, because there's a lot of people, you know, if you create quality content and you add value, value, like David was saying, there's, there's no restriction to what can happen in your world. So, yeah. And that's awesome. Well. And Russ, people get in touch with you. How go to, uh, if you want to call bookrust.com, you can always connect with me on that. And also LinkedIn, uh, connect with me. I don't have as many connections as David, but I, I do have a few openings there as well. So <laughs> happy to connect with you and, uh, just send me an invitation and DM me and, and follow up. Cause I'm more than happy to connect. There you go. There you go. Awesome. All right. Russ, uh, Steve Sparrow, you are next. Absolutely. Well, I, I did a little thing here, uh, D David, and I'm 165,000 uh, second, second connection. So that was my number. I appreciate that. The little, little hack there. One, one thing I want to mention, if you're in creator mode, I, I learned this recently on, on a, a LinkedIn audio event. If, if, if somebody's going to your, your connect, um, your, your profile, you got to go to the more, dot, 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 and then you could hit connect. And I think people just assume you can't. You just have to dig a little bit, and you can. And the advantage, if you're listening and you're wondering, following is great, but you're just going to be able to see content. If you want to communicate and connect, especially if you're on the unpaid version, you have to connect, and, and have they have to accept your connect request, not just follow. Uh, some people want to do it because they think it's polite to start following before you connect. I'm, I'm a in-your-face bull in a china closet guy just go in there whatever you know i'm just like you like me here i am you know but anyway um it, this has been great i just want to yeah so and i gotta jump in like a minute but best way to reach me is, is on linkedin i live there i don't really live in any of the other social platforms uh or you can go to stevespiro.com and that'll get you to all of the different things i do uh and uh, you know to hire me as a speaker uh it's spiro-global.com but that you can get to that too through stevespiro.com and you can get to my show at masterconnector.show so a few few links there but stevespiro.com will get you everywhere that is so awesome and you know one thing i want to say is all the information that everybody's giving is directly clickable in the comments and in the show notes so as you Get ready to exit the show tonight. Just like you see on the screen, click on Steve information, click on David, click on Russ, click on uh, D Scott and get over there and connect with them. And that's what this is all about. So Steve, I know you got to jump. Have Thanks a for being hey, here. Appreciate Bless having you it. Thanks be great, great being on stage with you, you folks. Incredible. Take care. We'll see you. All right, Scott, it's up to you. You know, I, 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 up here. I, I I, I believe one conversation can change your life or change your business. And that's why that's the tagline under my name uh, on LinkedIn. And so people can find me on LinkedIn, D. Scott Smith. And you can go to dscottsmith.com. 
and all the connection stuff is there. Uh, LinkedIn is the place uh, that I probably spend the most time. You can find me over on Instagram if you want, but uh, let's uh, send me an email, scott at dscottsmith.com or on, on LinkedIn. And as I said in the comments, I believe that every person that's watching this show already has a fabulous network filled with remarkable people who want you to succeed. They just need to know what problem you solve and who your ideal customer is. And, and you can build from that. And so don't, don't, you know, don't worry about, oh, I can't go to networking events or I'm shy or whatever. It doesn't matter. You already have a great network. Lean into that first. Amen. Amen. Amen yes. And also, let me just wind up with my LinkedIn newsletter this week was on time. And you know what? It is true what the song says. Time is on your side. Any of you want to sing that for me? There you go. None of you want to <laughs> sing. Okay. Rolling Stones. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Time is on. Anyway, okay. So, but that is so true because you get to choose how you spend your time. You don't really need more time. You need to be more effective at utilizing the time that you have. So I don't want to hear out there that you don't have time to network and connect with people. You don't have time not to network and connect with people. It is the, what sustains community is what we were built for. We were created by God for community. And so today you need to schedule five minutes, 10 minutes. Don't let social media consume you. You control it. Give yourself 15 minutes to connect with people on social media and then get off. But at least you intentionally got busy, did some stuff, and spent that time yeah. effectively and wisely. And that, that is so, so important. So, guys, I tell you, I do not even know what to say, how amazingly thankful I am for all of you. And um, it has been just a wonderful last few years getting to know you. And, um, and I look forward to, as I tell everybody, I'm a lifetime connector. So, you know, you're stuck with me as your friend. I am not going anywhere, right? And that, by the way, is what connection is all about. Connection is not, hey, David, let's connect. And David says, hey, Russ, I can help you get a job for $7.99. Join my thing. That is not connection. <laughs> connection is David saying, Russ, let's hop on a plane and go meet my wife in Maui. And I'm like, great, I got my wife. Let's go. We're going to Maui. Come on. Connection is doing things and doing life and engaging with people, however that is, right? Whether yeah. it's virtually or in person. That is connection. And you may think you don't have time for that, but I can tell you, like Scott said, you're, you can only obviously do so much with your time, but you will easily see who you truly connect and vibe with. And I have made some of the best, deepest relationships of my life over the last couple of years virtually. Uh, here in a couple of weeks, um, well, about a month, we're going away with our two best couple friends, my wife and I, up to Mount Hood area. We're going to grab, we get a house together, a uh, three bedroom, three bath house. We have a great time together. They are amazing, amazing friends, but I've made some friends pretty close to that, that I've actually never been in the same room with that are that, that would actually hop on a plane and fly to Oregon. If I really was that desperate in need. And I really believe that, you know, I mean, sometimes we can't do that, but people, have that like their willingness to go beyond to help each other. So that is what networking connection is all about, guys. I can't even tell you. I'm going to wrap it up here with just all of you on the screen. But I just want to say thank you again for being here. And everybody, here you go. Thursdays, 4 p.m. Pacific, Rust Reels Live every week. We have amazing people like we have right here on the screen every week. Please, please, please go to, as it says below there, rushreels.live and subscribe on YouTube because you will be amazed at the number of amazing people that I've been blessed to have on my live stream. So check that out. And next week, Thursday, 4 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Until then, let's all give ever a big screen. We're going to do a screenshot. So let's all give us our happy faces. <laughs> there you go. So she got a couple of screenshots from that. So we're do. all good. And until we see you again, everybody, have a great day and a great life. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye -bye.